I'm going to show you some examples of how we use trigonometry to find side lengths in right angled triangles. Trigonometry is a very practical topic and lots of the examples that we see come from real life practical situations. For example, let's have a look at a question about finding the height of a tower. So here's our tower. This is the sort of thing that a surveyor would have to do when they're working. It's not very easy to measure the height of the tower, but we can calculate the height using trigonometry. Now, to be able to use trigonometry, we've got to introduce a triangle that we can use to measure. And the triangle we're going to use is formed between the surveyor's eye line to the top of the tower, along this line here, and by drawing a horizontal line from where he's standing to the base of the tower, like that. Now, the surveyor can use a piece of equipment called a clinometer to measure this angle here, the angle he's looking up at the top of the tower. So let's say that's 32 degrees. Now we know from our diagram down here, and we could measure, that the distance from where the surveyor is standing to the base of the tower is 5 metres. So the distance for this line here at the base of our triangle is also going to be 5 metres. And then we'd need to know the height of the surveyor. And an average person about 6 foot would be about 1.72 metres. So let's say he's 1.72 metres. So what we need to do is work out this length here and then add it to the 1.72 metres, the height of the surveyor, and that will give us the total height of the tower. So the first thing we need to do when we're doing a trigonometry question is to remind ourselves of the trig ratios. So let's write down our memory aid at the top here. So we're going to write down so care toa. That's sine is the opposite over the hypotenuse, cosine is the adjacent over the hypotenuse, tangent is the opposite over the adjacent. It's always a good idea to write that down whenever you're doing a question on trigonometry. And if you write it like we have here in formula triangles, that will help us to work out how we use it to calculate our missing side length. Now we're ready to start the question, but before we do any calculating, we need to label our sides. Now, in our triangle here, we've got a right angle formed between this line and the tower. So that means that the side length opposite that, this one, will be the hypotenuse. We can label that as the hypotenuse. Now this is the angle we're interested in, 32, which means that this length here is the opposite and the length along the bottom here is the adjacent. So we've labelled those. Now we need to decide which of our three ratios, the sine, the cosine or the tangent, we're going to use to work out our missing side length. Now what we're trying to find is this length here, the opposite. So let's give that a letter so we can refer to it. Let's call that x. Now to decide which of our three ratios we want to use, we have to look at the side we're trying to find and the side that we know the length of already. They all use the angle, so that doesn't help us to decide. Now for this question, we're trying to find the opposite and we know the adjacent. So we look to see which of these three ratios connects the opposite and the adjacent, and it's this one. So we're going to use the tangent ratio. Now, we're trying to find the opposite. So let's say that the opposite from a formula triangle, because that's at the top there, we know it equals the adjacent multiplied by the tan of the angle. So the opposite is the adjacent multiplied by the tan of the angle, which is 32 degrees. Now we can put in our values. So we've called the opposite x. So we can say that's x equals. The adjacent is 5, and that's multiplied by tan 32. 
Now at this stage, we're going to try and find x. And we need to use a calculator to do this. So we'll get our calculator. And I'll show you how we can use a calculator to work out these uh, side lengths. So here's our calculator. Now you need to have a scientific calculator for doing trigonometry. And you'll notice that you've got three buttons here. You've got sine, cosine, and tan. Those are the three we're going to be using for our trigonometry. And you should be able to find those on your calculator. Now calculators work in a similar way, but they have slight differences. So you need to make sure you understand how your calculator works. There's one more thing that's important. Scientific calculators work with different types of angles. Now, to do trigonometry correctly, we need to be using angles measured in degrees. So you must make sure that your calculator is working in degrees. It might show that by having a little D at the top of the screen here, or you might have to go into the settings like I do here to check that that's right. So if I just check mine in the setup, I can see my angle is in degrees. So that's okay, I'm working in the right mode. So now all I have to do is put in my question into the calculator. So I need to do 5 multiplied by tan 32 degrees. And that's going to give me 3.124 metres. So, so far, we've worked out the height of the triangle, but we haven't yet got the full height of the tower. This bit is 3.124 metres. To find the height of the tower, we've then got to add on the 1.72 metres. So, my height for my tower will be 3.124 plus 1.72. So on the calculator, 3.124 plus 1.72 gives me 4.844 metres. That's a little bit too accurate for what we need, so let's round it to 4.8 metres to two significant figures. Here's another question. This time I'm finding the height here of a triangle. Nice and straightforward triangle this one. Not very complicated. I've written out my soca toe at the top here. So the next thing I need to do is to label my sides. So again, the first side is the one opposite the right angle. That's the longest side, that's the hypotenuse. Then working for my angle here of 27 degrees, the angle over here that's labelled Y is my opposite, and so the other side length must be the adjacent. Now again, I've got to decide which ratio I want. So I look at the length that I know, which is the hypotenuse, and the length I'm trying to find, which is the opposite. And then I look to see which of my ratios connects the hypotenuse and the opposite. And the answer is, it's the sine ratio. So I'm going to use the sine ratio. Now I want to find the opposite. So I look at my formula triangle and I can see that the opposite, which is here, is the hypotenuse multiplied by the sine of the angle. So my opposite is the hypotenuse multiplied by the sine of my angle, which is 27 degrees. If I substitute in the values that I know, the opposite here we're trying to find is called y. The hypotenuse is 9, and then I've got my angle of sine 27. So now we're ready to put this into the calculator to find y. Here's my calculator. Simply have to type in 9 multiplied by the sine of 27. My answer, 4.08591 4498. 
I don't need it to be that accurate, so I'm going to round it to be 4.1 uh, centimetres, this is in, and that's to two significant figures. Be careful to make sure that you always include your units, and they must be the same as the other units in the question, so centimetres in this case. And here's a third question. This time, slightly different. What we've got here is an isosceles triangle. We can tell it's isosceles because the two angles at the base here are both the same. And we're trying to find this slant height of the triangle. Now at the moment, there aren't any right angles on here, so we're going to have to add one in to help us to use trigonometry. So what we can do with this question is to draw a line from the top of the triangle to the base of the triangle. And by drawing a line there, we formed a right angled triangle on either side. So we split our isosceles triangle directly in half. Now, this length here was 14 centimetres all the way across, so halfway will be 7 centimetres. And we've got our angle here at 55 degrees, and we're trying to find this length here, labelled Z. So I need to label my side lengths. The right angle is here, so Z will be the hypotenuse. From my angle that I'm using here, this side will be the opposite, and this side down here will be the adjacent. So to choose which of my three ratios I need to use, I look at the information I know, which is the adjacent, what I'm trying to find, the hypotenuse, and then decide which of my three connects those two. And the answer is the cosine. So I'm going to use the cosine. Now this time, if I look at my formula triangle, I can see that the hypotenuse is here. So the hypotenuse is going to equal the adjacent divided by the cosine of the angle. So my hypotenuse is the adjacent divided by the cosine of 55 degrees. If I substitute in the things that I know, so I'm trying to find my hypotenuse, so that is Z. My adjacent is 7 centimetres, and I've got a cosine of 55 degrees. So to find that length z, I need to use my calculator. I need to be careful that I know how my calculator works to make sure I'm doing division correctly. But on my calculator, I just do 7 divided by the cosine of 55 degrees, which will equal 12.20412757. And again, that's too accurate for what I need, so I'm going to round it and I'm going to say that's 12.2 centimetres to three significant figures.